Let's get started. Starbase is bustling with activity across all systems, especially with SpaceX testing and recent updates indicating that Flight 5 may be closer than expected. We may not have to wait until late November, so what's the reason behind this? Meanwhile, SpaceX has successfully launched the Falcon 9 return to flight mission. In contrast, Blue Origin's suborbital mission was aborted, once again leading to disappointment. There's a lot to cover, so let's explore the latest developments on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Following the first full-stack test late last month, SpaceX has continued ramping up operations, including critical testing with Chopstick. Immediately after these steps, a new road closure schedule was announced indicating an important test was approaching. By late October 4th and early on the 5th, the hot staging ring was lifted back onto Booster 12. By the afternoon of October 5th, Ship 30 had been moved into position and was held by Chopstick. That same evening, the second full stack was completed. Following this, SpaceX was ready for an essential test involving Flight 5 hardware. On the morning of October 7th, Highway 4 was closed, and by noon, the launch pad was cleared with venting observed at both the orbital launch mount and the launch tower. By approximately 2.50 p.m. CDT, fuel was loaded onto all the tanks of Ship 30 and Booster 12, with frost appearing on the rocket. Notably, the frost didn't rise too high, suggesting the fuel load was not at full capacity. This process lasted around 20 minutes before detanking began, and the road was subsequently reopened. Then, on October 8th, SpaceX conducted another test of the water deluge system. It still sprayed water up with nominal force after a long period of inactivity, indicating that the test was successful. In summary, SpaceX successfully completed its second integration test, signaling its readiness for the next flight. Currently at Starbase, SpaceX has made a notable move. Several large trucks, possibly fuel trucks, are positioned in front of the launch site. This type of activity typically signals preparations for an official launch. More importantly, SpaceX announced on X after the recent test, Starship's fifth flight test is preparing to launch as soon as October 13th, pending regulatory approval. Musk added further excitement by saying, Launch could be as soon as Sunday. When asked about the possibility of catching the booster with Megazilla arms, Musk replied, yes, if all systems are working well. If the mid-October launch date initially seemed like speculation based on NOTMAR or NOTAM notices, SpaceX's official statement confirms that this possibility is now extremely high. Furthermore, the company has updated its homepage with the official timeline for Flight 5. While most steps remain unchanged, there is a significant adjustment regarding Super Heavy, specifically around T plus 6 minutes 50 seconds to 6 minutes 56, Super Heavy will have two options, Splashdown if no catch attempt or Landing Burn Shutdown and Catch Attempt. This means SpaceX will assess conditions and make the safest choice rather than be locked into a risky maneuver. Journalist Christian Davenport, emphasized this distinction in a tweet which Elon Musk confirmed with exactly. But of course, what we are all anticipating is the moment when Super Heavy is caught by the Mechazilla arms. This is the most significant change for Flight 5, and we'll dive deeper into the launch process details in the next episode. However, as we know, the FAA previously stated that Flight 5 could not take place before the end of November due to the addition of new requirements. Now, with SpaceX announcing the possibility of launching on October 13th and the catch attempt, this seems to contradict the FAA timeline. Furthermore, in its tweet, SpaceX still mentions pending regulatory approval. This raises the hypothesis that the FAA may no longer be the agency responsible for approving Flight 5, with NASA potentially stepping in as the licensing body. While this is uncertain, it's a possibility. More than anyone, NASA is likely the most eager to see Starship fly, as it plays a crucial role in the Artemis program. If true, this could mark the beginning of the FAA stepping back from approving rocket launches, a shift many have been waiting for after multiple delays. Removing these barriers would be a major milestone in the continued advancement of space exploration. What do you think? Could this scenario become reality, allowing SpaceX to launch as estimated? Respond with yes or no, and share your prediction for the Flight 5 launch date in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's development journey. 
Meanwhile, preparations for Flight 5 are ramping up along with work on nearby systems. On October 4th at Launch Pad B, we observed the corner sections of the orbital launch mount being transported across the production site. Additionally, a new unidentified section with a different design has appeared. With these developments, it seems that the construction of the OLM may commence soon. As we are now in October, the FAA's timeline for the completion of Launch Pad B has a little over three months remaining. However, several other systems will still need to be transported and assembled. One key component is the chopstick, which has been moved, which was moved to Starbase along with the tower modules but there has been no further information regarding its installation. I hope it'll be mounted on the tower soon. Although the official deadline extends into next year, I remain optimistic that Launch Pad B can be completed by the end of this year, allowing launch operations to begin in full force next year. Wrapping up the Starship section, let's now turn to the Falcon 9 Return to Flight mission. At 10.02 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, a Falcon 9 rocket launched from SLC-40, successfully delivering the Hera spacecraft for ESA. The mission proceeded smoothly, and 76 minutes after liftoff, the payload separated from the rocket, beginning its journey toward the asteroid Didymos and its moon Dimorphos. The spacecraft is expected to arrive in 2026, at which point it will conduct a six-month mission to survey the effects of NASA's 2022 Double Asteroid Redirection Test Mission, otherwise known as DART. This project is critical for assessing our ability to protect Earth from potential asteroid impacts in the future. Once again, this mission highlights SpaceX's reliability and superiority, initially planned for launch on Russia's Soyuz and later Ariane 6. Both rockets encountered issues, leading ESA to choose SpaceX's Falcon 9. The mission, which has a disclosed cost of 401 million US dollars or 363 million euros, underscores the trust placed on SpaceX. Following the launch, Ian Carnelli briefly commented, It's doing perfect, while Elon Musk proudly added, Godspeed, Hera. This successful launch proves that the issues experienced during Crew-9 were isolated incidents. Falcon 9 continues to demonstrate that it is the most reliable rocket in the world. The FAA, which has recently imposed investigations and fines on SpaceX, may feel some embarrassment over its previous hindrances to Falcon 9's operations. It remains to be seen whether the agency will allow the Falcon rocket to return to full operations after this success. SpaceX's next major mission is set to launch the Europa Clipper on Falcon Heavy, in which it has already encapsulated the spacecraft inside the Falcon Heavy fairing, Yet, NASA recently announced that the October 10th launch has been cancelled. The stated reason was concerns about Hurricane Milton, but FAA approval could also be a factor. Stay tuned for updates from NASA and SpaceX. This mission also marks the end of an era. It was the 23rd and final flight for the B-1061 booster. SpaceX explained that due to the additional performance required to deliver Hera to interplanetary transfer orbit, this is the 23rd and final mission for this Falcon 9 first stage booster. B-1061 has supported many significant missions, including Crew-1, Crew-2, SXM-8, CRS-23, IXPE, Transporter 4, Transporter 5, Global Star FM-15, ISI Eros C-3, Korea 425, Maxar 1, ASBM, and 10 Starlink missions. Along with other boosters, B-1061 has continuously pushed the boundaries of reusability, setting new records. Its legacy will lay the foundation for future boosters to aim for even loftier goals, such as achieving 40 launches per booster. Let's take a moment to express our gratitude to B-1061. Thank you, B-1061, for your incredible service. And now let's discuss Blue Origin's latest disappointment with the new Shepard mission abort. This outcome was not unexpected when Blue Origin announced it would be the debut mission of a new spacecraft and booster. Originally, Blue Origin had planned to launch its uncrewed NS-27 mission on the morning of October 7th, sending a brand new New Shepard rocket capsule combo on a brief trip to suborbital space. However, a problem arose, leading to an extended countdown. Ultimately, Joel Ebby, Blue Origin's creative director, announced, We're going to scrub the launch for today. They're troubleshooting a vehicle issue that will basically take us outside our available launch window. 
Abby added, Always disappointing to get to this point, but you know, we want to make sure all these systems are completely ready to go and be certain about the launch conditions for flight. Blue Origin also took to X, formerly Twitter, to explain, We're standing down on today's launch attempt to troubleshoot a vehicle issue that would have taken us beyond our launch window. New launch target forthcoming. Blue Origin had appeared confident in this debut flight, emphasizing the new spacecraft and booster's many important upgrades. Yet once again, their progress has been hindered by technical issues. It's worth remembering that after the 2022 incident, Blue Origin has been operating New Shepard with only a single booster. If the company does not take swift action, it risks losing its position in the suborbital market to competitors. This latest problem highlights that even suborbital flights remain a challenge for Blue Origin. However, they are now setting their sights on their first orbital flight with New Glenn in November. Let's see if they can overcome these hurdles and move forward. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.